welcome you student in the next lecture of the systematic of living organisms so in the previous lecture we have discussed regarding the fungi regarding the kingdom of fungi and uh, previous to that also we have discussed regarding the other kingdoms now next is there about the kingdom animalia so kingdom animalia here the members are there they are the heterotrophs adapted to the holozoic nutrition so about the kingdom plantae they are the autotrophs are there fungi which are also heterotrophs are there which are the showing the digestion outside the body so here in case of the animal they shows the digestion inside so adapted to the holozoic nutrition most of them they have the capacity of the locomotion they can move from one place to the another place they are multicellular eukaryotes so here well what well organized body is there where they lack lack the chlorophyll as well as the cell wall so already we have discussed in the previous topic if you as what is the lecture the cell wall is a present in the plant as well as in case of the fungi so here in case of the animal cell cell wall is absent as well as they don't show the presence of chlorophyll that's why here they are called as a heterotroph the growth is a determinate which follow the definite pattern and it is up to certain limit after that they get die in this what are the uh, in detail regarding the kingdom animalia we'll learn in the next lesson now we'll go to the next topic that is about the viruses so viruses viroids are the group of acellular organism and are not included in the five kingdoms of classification of the vitakars because this they shows what are the they are in between we can say they are the living as well as they are the non living one if you observe that inside the body they are the active they are living but outside the body of the organism they are the non living one that's why they are not included in the kingdom five kingdoms of the classification of the vitacker the acellular organism they are called as a acellular organism so virus is the name by the louis pasteur venom or the poison this obligate parasite were given the name virus which is by the m j bijernek after observation that they were able to migrate in an agar gel thus being an infectious soluble agent he called the filtrate as a contagion vivum fluidum it was scientist stanley who demonstrated that viruses are inert outside the host cell and can be crystallized so in the body they are the active when outside the body they are inactive and that's why they cannot be they can be crystallized they are made up of the proteins viruses they lack their own cell machinery so here that's why they are inactive outside the host cell they have protein coat which is called as a capsid around the nucleic acid strand thus considering to be a, a cellular organism viruses are inactive outside a host cell so in the beginning only i said but once they enter their specific host cell they take the charge of the cellular machinery of the host cell and duplicate themselves so once they enter inside the cell of any other organism they immediately enter inside the nucleus and they take charge of that particular nucleus of the each and every cell of the body and then duplicate very fastly and which causes the number of the diseases in the that particular organism viruses this can be called as a infectious nucleoprotein partic particles so here they attack on the nucleus of the cell types of the viruses as per the genetic material viruses are grouped as a dna viruses or the rna viruses protein coat is called as a capsid capsid is made up of the smaller units the called as a capsomers the capsomers are there which are arranged in the polyhedral or in the helical form so in the diagram you can observe capsid protects the genetic material the genetic material in the virus is just now i said either it will be a dna or it will be a rna if it is a rna then it may be a single stranded or rna or maybe in the double stranded form of the rna while the dna is there which is of the double stranded viruses that infect the bacterial cell are called as a bacteriophage which normally have a double stranded dna viruses causes the disorders like the leaf curling yellowing of the leaf then the mosaic formation etc in the plant so in this diagram you can get the clear idea how they shows the curling of the leaf in the number of the plants as well as the yellowing of the leaf in the number of the plants 
and mouth diseases in the animal or the swine flu which are viral diseases so mouth disease also we can observe in this cattle so which also cause the diseases for the food also swine flu we observe in case of the number of the birds smallpox mumps herpes to common cold so this all everything because of this viruses viruses are the causative agent of many diseases in the humans the list list includes uh, aids too next group is that uh, that is about the viroids so viroids that we observe in case of the potato or number of other crop plants potato spindle tuber disease was uh, found to be caused by a single stranded rna which lacks the protein coat so in this diagram we can observe how the structure is there about the potato which is a uneven structure is there tio denner in the 1971 he reported that this is a low molecular weight rna and the smaller in size than the viruses this infectious rna strands are called as a viroids so they are different from the viruses next group we will see about the lichens so in the beginning only in the fungi kingdom fungi we have discussed some introductory part of the lichen so what are lichen lichen is a coexist of the algae and the fungi for the mutual benefit so they shows a symbiotic association between one another the algae cannot survive without the fungi while the fungi cannot survive without the algae so it is very difficult to differentiate so together which forms a lichen alga member is there which is called as a phycobion mostly belong to the cyanobacteria where the blue green algae or we can say about the green algae is a present where this algae is there we show the presence of the chloroplasts so that's where they can prepare the food and that food is provided to the fungal members while the fungal members which are called as the mycobionts so fungi do not have the chlorophyll but here the fungi provides the water as well as the minerals to the algae for the preparation of the food so that's why both are getting the benefit and both are depend on the one another so here in this picture we can observe that how the lichen is there they are excellent example of the symbiosis so just now i said the alga component of the lichen provide food to the fungal part while the fungus provide the shelter to the alga also absorb the water and minerals to the alga so just now i am to explain lichen are sensitive to pollution so that's why they are called as a pollution indicators they are not found in the polluted regions hence they are considered as a pollution indicators so wherever pollution we observe there we don't find the this lichens so if we observe that the lichens somewhere so you have to consider that this area is a pollution free lichens are also play important role in soil formation by using specific acid production so here first whatever they grow on the rock or some of the dead what is the logs of the some of the tree so where it decomposes by releasing some particular type of the specific acid as a result the withering order of or the what is the uh, decomposition of that particular block of that particular uh, tree can be releases what is the number of the uh, nutrients and which help for the growth of the new plants so here we have finished this lesson